March the 29th. Bond, Miss Thomas, is there a reason why you can't sit up and take your whole, and so we could just see your whole thing? Is there a reason why you can't do that? I, I can't hear you. You're muted, but it's very distracting. It's very distracting when you put your whole face and eyes up to the camera. If you could please sit up straight for me. Can can you unmute and tell me why you can't sit up straight? Because it's this is this you is. Want me to, should I stand up? This is my first time, so I don't know how to I don't know how to work it. So am I doing correct now? No, ma'am. You sitting right up to the can? Can you? I mean, do you see how the rest of us are sitting up straight? Smokes, that was too close. Do you see uh -oh. how we're sitting up straight and you can see half of our upper body? Can you see me now? Yes, ma'am. I right. understand. I don't know how to work this. Ms. Okay. Thomas indicated she'll be coming in person in the future. She should come in person because it's, she keeps saying, she keeps owning that she don't know how to work it. It's nothing to work. It's It's easy. It's just... You just put your the device down and you just stand in front of the camera. Nonetheless, okay. Ma'am, just ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I, I need you to stabilize your device. Okay, Let, let's hurry up. Let's hurry up. Number one, she keeps talking. That's number one. She keeps talking. Number two, she's back right up on it. But that's, let's, let's just move. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So discovery should be submitted by March 29th. And then Mr. Amori, with respect to the April the 29th court date, sir, you're not required to appear. You've appeared today. Therefore, you're not required to appear on that day. However, if you want to come, you may, because you may appear at all of the scheduled court appearances. If you don't appear, then you can find out from the prosecutor's office when the next court date is and whether your appearance is required, okay? That's good. All right. Um, anything further with respect to this matter? Not from the people. Oh, Judge, um, it was case number in there, 784 and 793. I think the court was saying another case number, but I just want to. Oh, what was I saying? 747? 747, yeah. <laughs> Why did I say that? Wait a minute. Seven. Miss Thomas. Okay, no, I'm I'm correct. So what what case numbers are you using? Miss Miss Thomas has case number two, three, four, five, seven. I'm sorry, case number two, three, four, five, seven is seven, nine, three, seven, eight, four. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, then we're all set. Everyone have a great day and stay safe. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Don, what do you have next? I'm going to be a Zoom judge. Uh, yes, sir. I believe Mr. Choate's in for Mr. Floyd. Yes, Judge. Randler, that's you, sir. Yes, sir. And um, I have a motion filed by John Floyd and Chris Show, attorneys of record for the defendant. And you are Mr. Show. That is correct, Judge. And where's Mr. Floyd today? Mr. Floyd was in court in Harris County. Uh, he is on his way back to the office, um, but uh, he had court in Harris County. All right, there's a motion to withdraw that's filed. Please uh, summarize it for me, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Uh, primarily, there was a legal services contract in which a trial fee became due upon the case being set for trial. 
That happened back in 2021. Uh, numerous reminders were sent to Mr. Cranmer, along with phone calls. Um, it ended up being that he would not respond to our emails or our phone calls, which created uh, some conflict. And the couple of times that he did respond, he said that he had the money, he just wasn't going to pay it. And that began to create resentment between the firm and him. And we're at the point now where we've never filed a motion to withdraw for failure to pay fees, but we've finally done it after my 13 years of working with Mr. Floyd because the relationship is irrevocably damaged because we do not rely, we cannot rely on his word and it creates problems for us taking anything that he has said at face value, Judge. All right. <laughs> Generally, uh, the, the court is sympathetic toward issues on pay, but this one, in, in all cases, are circumstance based. This is a case that was filed, was indicted, going on was well, three and a half years old, over three, three and a half, going on four years. The date of the event in the indictment is 2010. We're, that's 14 years ago. This is continuous sexual abuse of a child, of a complainant in a serious case like this has to be thought of as well. Are we saying we want to grant the motion, have the defendant start over in finding an attorney? And someone's going to talk to the complainant and say, I know this is 14 years old. You're going to wait another four or five years. The we date, understand the. No, no. When when were y'all hired? What was the date you were hired, please? In approximately 2020. And now when, when is the trial? When is the trial date? April. I may. Uh, In April, two weeks? Two weeks. Yes. April 15th. So you filed it on April 1st, as we are coming up to a, a case that's almost four years old, on the eve of trial on a continuous sexual abuse of a child, this is brought up to the court on something that, according to you, has been a systemic problem for years? We understand how it looks, Judge. I well, personally it, would have... Well, it is. It's what it is. It doesn't. It's not what it looks like. It's what it is, isn't it? What's wrong with my analysis on that? We have never had to file a motion to withdraw for failure to pay fees. Um, the problem is that Mr. Cranmer uh, has finally pushed our final buttons, and uh, we have had to file this because we no longer can rely on being able to communicate with him or to have any sort of good working relationship with him, Judge. We regret having to file it, but we had to file it. And we do understand that it is a delay um, in the case. However, we do not feel that there is any more of a working attorney-client relationship at this point. <clears throat> and our concern is that if, depending on what happens at trial, if this came back at a writ, it becomes a problem for everybody as well because of the antagonism between us and Mr. Cranmer. I think that's something you're going to have to deal with. I, I just uh, find this inappropriate at the timing of this for something that you know has been bubbling under for a while on the eve of a serious one of the most serious types of allegations in the penal code continuous sexual abuse of a child um to tell me that y'all need to be released because of a problem that's been going on for years with your client that's not timely sir uh, I, I understand that we tried to give him every possibility to communicate with us and to um you know, meet his obligations on the, the contract, and he... How was the uh, child victim at, this, at the time of his younger than 14? Yes, sir. More tough.
Okay, in a case like this uh, as well, <clears throat> in determining whether uh, relief is to be given in a case involving a sexual assault of a child younger than 17 years of age, such as in this, the court can consider the impact on the victim of the continuous, uh, of a continuance or a release at the eve of trial after years of representing a defendant. And the reason that you're giving me is something that is no different from the reason that existed years ago. And on the eve of a major trial like this, the court finds that it's not appropriate. It's not fair for all parties. And it certainly could have been dealt with long ago so that on the eve of trial, we don't start up from a cold start on a major case because any lawyer rehired in this, it's going to take a while to prepare. We all know that. And we're talking now about a case that's going on, an event that occurred almost 15 years previously. And and we're heading up toward four years from the indictment and several years your firm has been uh, representing the defendant. Judge, I will say for the record that uh, Mr. Floyd has been in touch with me on a continuous basis concerning this ever since uh, I've been on this case. And I know he's spoken to the previous attorney numerous times just to let the court know they have been working on the case. What does that mean? I just just did that. This is just one of those that they've always been honorable with me. And, and I'm not I, saying and he's I, not. No, and it's I just, honestly believe it's just. They well, just, you're representing I mean, the state. What do you have to say about this? You've I, got I want victim. to go to trial, Judge. I'm, I okay. mean, we, we've got a victim that needs to go to trial. You disagree with the, with the continuance. You want to move forward. Yes, sir. I understand their position, but I've got a complaining witness that's been waiting for numerous years to get this taken care of, and we're going to take care of it. All right. The courts uh, have ruled on motions to withdraw in the past, and I'm citing uh, a case, a recent case, uh, Reed versus State, where uh, the attorney similarly requested to withdraw for payment reasons. And And it was, um, and the trial court granted the motion to withdraw. Then the Court of Appeals ruled that the trial court abused its discretion in granting the trial attorney's motion to withdraw. And the court's decision on a motion to withdraw is an abuse of discretion review standard. And we could go there. It's, it's a never ending list of what factors can be used. There's no real set litmus test, but the disruption that may result in a trial proceeding as a result of the attorney's withdrawal uh, is an issue, but here it says the attorney's role, if any, in creating the need to withdraw. You have been, you've told me for years, y'all have been having a payment problem. 
but that was something y'all decided to address and stay with and deal with. And then on the eve of the trial, again, when's the date set for this trial? The 15th, just in a week and a half. April, in a week and a half. On a major trial like this, which generally takes a week or so to try. What, uh, Mr. Cranmer? Yes, sir. Well, you know you've had an issue paying your attorney. I offered the best I can offer at this point, which would be to use a combination of credit cards at the very last minute, just because it's going to really destroy my financial situation. Unless I'm looking at being on the other side as one way or the other. Well, like, you can imagine yeah. how your financial distress it's bad is, is not something the court sympathizes with. That's your problem. Like it's everybody's problem. <laughs> Finance is everybody's problem. But once again, this thing has been around for almost four years. This this serious matter. And you've had other things you think are more important to pay for. So no, I don't I hate to get involved in a financial thing, but what are you able to do to pay these people to help you? What about funds? Sir. Sir, what about my? How much are we talking about? Um, on top of the on thirty thousand, I've already paid. They are requesting uh, twenty thousand for the trial. Oh, well, that's uh, I don't want to know the specifics. How much are you able to pay at this moment? Have I had to pay right this moment? I might have in your master to... plan. You have about your credit card oh, situation. How are you going to? I should be able to pay it all by that. By when? By the week of trial. That's on March of election. Oh, okay. Okay, he says, did you hear that, Mr. Show? I did, Judge, and I apologize, but this is just another example of how we can't rely on his statements because he's been uh, telling us all along that he can pay it. Uh -oh. Well, he's not going to dun me, which is called dunning. That's a term used when you try to fake people out about the money. You're going to be held accountable and we're going to see where you are in uh, a couple of weeks. And I expect your obli your obligations to be satisfied uh, based upon what you told me. Yes. We're going to have a hearing on this. You're going to have to postpone this case for a couple of weeks. But in two weeks, you're going to either be good for your word or you're going to be good for your word in jail. I'll hold you in contempt because I'll rely on what you have to say. Uh, and we're not going to start from a cold start and have an attorney have to get ready for months and months on a case this old. They put in the time and uh, I expect, uh, and it's all fairness, you have an obligation. But I'm finding that by dunning them, you are also dunning the court and misleading the court on your obligations, which you will pay for if I find you don't honor them. So you take care of this because I don't want something to start over again on attorneys. You work with them. They're good lawyers, but don't lie about things. They need to be, they need to know where they stand as well. But this case needs, it's, it's too old. Yes, this needs to be I moved not, forward. My situation has changed, obviously. Everybody's got financial problems. Definitely. Welcome to Destroy the planet it. Earth. We all have financial problems, but you figure, <laughs> each of us have to figure them out. Every one of us have issues. Yes. Just, just to be clear, when we come back on the fifteenth, we're not we're not for trial. It's a hearing to see where we're at. Yes. Correct? Okay. So That's what I'm need... going to do. With Mr. Floyd's office, with some potential dates, because scheduling with, with Mr. Floyd's office has it, has been somewhat difficult. It's it's been. He takes care of his so position. Y'all are going to have to make special arrangements to get here for this trial because I'm not going to wait months 
It's going to be just a few weeks, sir. Chris, do you understand? Yes, Judge. Sorry. You got your marching orders. Yes, Take sir. care of your obligations. We're going to see you back on uh, April 15th. And I want to hear some good news. And then it will specially, that case will be specially said. This is terrible. Anything else to add? No, Judge. Okay. I'll see everybody back on the, on the 15th. Get a resetting, sir. Thank you, Judge.